Welcome you here tonight. Thanks for coming along. Obviously, this is a very um, important issue that, that is a great need for housing within the town and within the whole country, actually. But whenever we go out on the doorstep as politicians, we um, that's one of the main th things we get on the doorstep about the, the shortage of housing, the, the, the uh, young people that can't that are waiting or even get on waiting this because they haven't got their job. So it's, it's an issue that is, is absolutely vital. You know? it's, I, I wish we could actually find a way of attracting the number of people that are of concern about the issue to sit on the I know meetings are a bit old fashioned these days and, and everyone does all their work on the Twitter and all those what. But it's nothing, as far as I'm concerned, the face to face meeting is, is a way to get people to work together. And I don't know really how we can do more than we are trying to do. The Chase Scouts have been holding a number of these meetings and we will do our best to encourage people. Right, no further ado, I think um, our, our, our speak, unfortunately, um, Owen Davis, one of our, Owen Jones, sorry, <laughs> yeah, Owen Jones, is, uh, he's unable to come tonight, apparently he's got a sore throat and he can't make it, so it's a, it's a shame really, but there we go. Uh, Mick Patrick, most of you all know, if not everyone knows it, he's got his, uh, his brief is uh, the defend can't uh, hire the, Defend trade, okay. defend council housing, Harlow and National. I was going to say, yeah. yeah and then Mick will speak first, and then followed by a, a, a Traveller Solidarity um, speaker, yeah. who, and uh, Bob Davis will be f final speaker tonight. Uh, speak for about 15 minutes, or 10 to 15 minutes anyway, and then we can open it up for a bit of discussion and to see where we go from there. And that hopefully generate some ideas of how to keep this issue more, get uh, more to the, fr the front line. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that came here. I'd like to thank the travellers since, since Dale Farm, I've been involved in them, and they have also come to the, uh, the national meetings, lobbies of parliament, and demonstrations as well, because you know, we're all in this together. You know, that they need somewhere to live, we need somewhere to live. There, there, is, a, there is a crisis. Okay, tell you a little bit about um, DCH. It's been going for, for 20, 25 years now. You know, we've been fighting privatisation, you know, the, the, the set off of, of, a, of um, council houses to, to the housing associations, you know, of which governments have made a, a, a tidy fund, some, and, and um, the, you know, the privatisation <coughs> of, of, of that, the daylight robbery of our rents of millions of pounds every year, and the underinvestment of money that has not come back in, into council housing, the set off of council housing, you know, to, to the figure of £68 billion pound if, you, if you include the privatisation, the stamp duty and the actual money you know, that, that, that has been um, made through council house sales. You know, 75 per cent of council houses have now been, been sold off and not replaced, you know, leaving us with this housing crisis. Um, and the answer to that seems you know, to be, you know, what started you know, was with the Labour Party to, to a lesser extent, now on, onto the Conservatives. You, you know, and their idea is that now that um, councils uh, become self-financing, you know, themselves, with, you know, which leaves all sorts of dangers. Um, Harlow Council is now putting a debt of £209 million, pound, you know, for what the government calls a backlog of repairs of, of a total of £30 billion, pound, which, you know, effectively only a couple of years ago was £17 billion. Pound. You know, they just plucked this figure out, out, out of the air. You know, and um, it's, you know, but Harlow's got to pay this back from the council tenants' rents over over 25 years. You know, and, and you know, there goes our decent homes, our um, environmentally friendly homes, our solar panels. You know, our new homes. For, you know, for, for the next generation. On top of that, you know, we now have the localism bill. You know, that was that was fought off three times in Parliament. You know, which was um, attacking tenants' rights and, uh, and you know introducing means testing of, of the council tenancies. You know, and uh, after you know, three times that, that was finally passed in the last November. Um, 
there's been changes to the housing uh, benefit benefit system. I won't go through that because that's basically another another meeting. But you've all, all got um, papers there that show you, you know, the schedules for that. <coughs> I've in fact asked Harlow Council um, a, a number of questions on that. It seems that nobody yet has been uh, made homeless because of benefit changes, but I'm asking for a secondary question now on you know, how many people are, are seek finance, financial help because of you know, the change to, benefits, uh, to the benefit system. Because it's gone from 50% of people used to get of the housing benefit for private sector rents, now down to 30% you know, at, at a stroke. Um, Yeah, the, the, the other thing with the localism bill is, is, is um, the means testing of, 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 of the waiting list. Effectively, you know, they're talking about shutting it down. Now, Harlow Council, through this localism bill, through this localism bill, does not have to take up these options. It's up to every individual council whether, you know, whether they take up the, the options you know, that, that are on offer. But um, Harlow Council, you, you know, uh, as the uh, has um, uh, applied uh, uh, they may shut down what, is, what they call band four, which makes up the vast majority of people on the waiting list. You know, by saying they've got um, we've got another piece of paper there. There was a briefing in, in Parliament. Um, um, there was no, a briefing consultation. Sorry, sent out by the community and local government last um, last January last year to, to, to councils. You know, to get a feel of, of what um, councils feel about this. You know, and um, through this consultation, um, there was just a, few, a handful of councillors, a few tenants and an officers, ten in total, that, that replied to that. And you know, some of the questions are, are put there in, in, in that piece of paper. You know, and, and that is something that they may look at is shutting down bound for bound for. They've already done that to some extent by uh, carrying out a consultation. They've gone from seven thousand to about three and a half thousand. You know, an audit rather, you know, across the town of people, you know, that they, they wanted to take off the housing list, you know, and, and some councillors and um, Robert Halfont, it's basically they shut the waiting list, they haven't done it really, you know, they've just told people to go away. Um, fixed term tenancies, okay. Um, first, of all, I'll let you know that, um, you know, the fixed term tenancies are not for people that have existing tenancies. You know, there's been some rumours that where people have been around scaremongering. It's not for our next generation of people that take on new tenancies. Okay, you know, so we'll make that, that point first. But nonetheless, you know, um, Harlow has um, said in his briefing that they will not have a, a two year tenancy. They, you know, they look at something different to that. However, you know, most disturbingly, they have, they have said that, that they will definitely look into the means testing of council tenancies on under occupancy, i.e. you know, if you're living in a home that's too big for you, or financially, now that could mean if you're unemployed, you know, or it could mean if, if you're earning too much, you know, a figure of 100,000 has been put about, you know, on an income for a house, but, you know, but that, that could obviously change, you know, and um, effectively, you know, what it's doing is stigmatising council housing, making council housing, uh, housing of, of a last resort. You know, um, I mean, pre-1979 for the right to buy, we had, we had good mixed communities. You know, 70% of, of the country's population lived in council houses. You know, from managers to directors to workers to the unemployed, you know, to the disabled and, and, and everybody. Um, this, you know, over the years, we fought back many battles. You know, the original one was um, about six years ago. You know, when we fought back the, the privatisation of, of most councils across the country, you know, where we saved about 200 councils from privatisation. Um, you know, and we're still taking that battle on. In, in, in Flintshire, we, um, we won a, a ballot there of stock transfer. Sheffield and, and many others are now gone from what is an arm length management organisation within, in, within the council, which is a part privatisation of the management that, that run the council, but the, the, the properties are still owned by the council. You know. And uh, Sheffield, just, just, uh, just a few weeks ago, went back into house, you know, which was great. Um, when we had our test, uh, test of opinion in Harlow, 89% of those, of those ballots said they wanted to stay with the council. But obviously, you know, we're still fighting back. I mean, on your seats there, we've got the e-petition. 
um, nationally, you know, which we've, we've been doing. You know, to start up a, a debate in Parliament. We've recently started up a different one where um, Austin Mitchell did actually get a debate, and that's on the DCH website. You can also sign that one. Um, what you have here also is a housing emergency statement. Now we're asking people to take that, you know, to the trade unions, to the councils, campaign groups, and everything, and, and support that by emailing us back or pass it as a resolution, you know, within the trade union branch. I've done that at Harlow TUC and, and also Essex um, Trade Union Council, and I'm, I'm taking that up to Coventry, you know, to the TUC conference then there. So you know, if we get as many of those put through as we can. You know, that, that would be great. It was um, recently passed in, in Chelmsford as well, uh, Chelmsford Against the Cuts, and the, the Chelmsford Trades Council um, conference there just a few weeks ago. Um, ah, yes. Most importantly, we know the local elections are coming up soon. Okay, and I've, I've given you a list here of um, questions. You know, I'd, I'd love to uh, see you send them off to Clive Souter. Actual fact, is a portfolio holder for, uh, for Harlow for housing. You know, who, um, it doesn't talk to me now. He won't even take the leaflet off of me. There <laughs> you go. Um, you know, asking the question on, on fixed term te um, um, tenancies. You know, we totally um, break up communities. You know, give no, nobody a secure future. It's not the answer. We, we know, you know, the answer is to actually build counts of housing. You know, they've done that post-war. You know, we've we built six new towns since then, you know, and the money, you know, for every pound spent on building a council house, another six pounds goes directly back into the local community. You know, because you, you've got the building materials, you've got the builders, but the builders back to work, pay taxes, the right goods, the building, you know, the, the decorating materials, the roads, the sewers, the gas, the IT communications, the list goes on. Um, do you believe in it shutting down the band four? I mean, we had a consultation on that up, up at the, um, the council just a, a little while ago, you know, and I, 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 I spoke, spoke to Clive Souter and, 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 and the officers there, you know, and explained to them, you know, if you shut down the waiting list and you close it, government, you know, has an excuse not to build council housing, you know, it makes the streets the problem under the carpet. It's no good to them, it's no good to us. Um, discarded duty to the homeless. I mean, that's just incredible. Someone turns up at the council, homeless, and all the council has to do now is offer them one offer of private uh, accommodation, you know, which they can't afford in the first place. You know, but um, the council, I've, written, I've asked that question, says that, that locally, local housing allowance will pay that for benefits. But it's not, you know, we don't need, you know, to cap benefits, what we need to do is cap private rents. And, and, and also control uh, private landlords. You know, at the moment, it's just incredible. I mean, I went on, on a, uh, online because my daughter had a problem it, it, down in Worthing, you know, and, and, and it said um, tenants rights on there. And there was about nine pages, you know, of the rights of the land, private landlord, and about two pages, for, you know, for, for my daughter. Um, finally, you know, do you, you believe in a mass investment in council housing? Obviously, yes, you know, we, we've come out of the war, we've built council housing, there was no GDP, there, there was no work, you know, and, and you know, you've got the government out, out, of, the out, of, the, out of trouble. You know, the last one is, is, is obviously, you know, the debt, you know, which we so pay three times over. A absolute madness. Okay, so, you know, if you can take that on board, you know, and um, oh, you've got a petition there as well, we can sign on the back and you take away with you my phone number, you know, and we can also take that to the council. So, anyway, I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I'll let the others go and speak now, and I uh, hope that's been useful, and please ask any questions.